and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am playing with Polycrew. Um, this is a Minwax water-based protective finish. Um, crystal clear apparently and from some of the feedback I've got in the Facebook group Acrylic Pouring for Fun, this is um, what a lot of you use and so I'm giving it a go. I have... Um, given it a go on a couple of older test pieces but I thought well <clears throat> let's give it a go on something like this and hello and welcome to Mickey Art my name is Michelle Edhouse and today I'm playing with this polycryl protective finish um, it's a water-based crystal clear finish and um, I have heard from a number of you in the Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group that this is one of the um, store-bought, paint-on, non-art-based finishes that actually doesn't go yellow. So I'm going to do some testing of my own, record it and give you that feedback um, and see how it goes. Um, one way that I would like to try it is the same method as the uh, the decor art um, stuff <laughs> uh, top coat the decor art top coat um, is oh, excuse my noisiness um, is applied which is in a thick layer which you allow to run off um, so I'm going to give that a go uh, it the instructions do say apply a thin coat uh, with a synthetic brush, apply it in the direction of the wood grain, do not over brush and leave at least two hours but then sand with a fine sandpaper and do additional coats. Um, but you know me, multiple coats of anything is painful so we're going to do it different because I saw I am I'm different so uh, the method that the pouring medium suggests is a 45 degree angle um, which is about that so let's give that a go. Let me go and find something to sit it up that high. Right, so one of the things that many of us had a point of view about with regards to the um, the top coat was the wastage. And um, so I was certainly one of those so I've rigged up this little catcher tray it's just a little plastic tray that I had lying around um, I've still got my push pins in the bottom of this painting this has been washed uh, to get the silicon off so I'm just gonna put that push pins onto those little bits of wood that lifts it up high enough for the tray to sit underneath and it for it to run off onto there um, but it also still keeps it up so we're not going to end up with those with it attached to the table which is one of the other things that people found happening in the top coat testing so um, I've decanted some of the uh, polycryl straight into this bottle which was completely clean just for applications easy it's really runny stuff and I want to be able to control it a lot more than I would pouring it out of the, um, the can so I'm just going to start off by pouring across the top and allowing some of it to dribble down and then just ok 
keep pouring. Um, now, as with any sort of pouring, it blobs up and let's catch it before it runs over the side and give the whole thing a nice wetting down including that back edge um, Then I'm going to give it another run over. And just using the nozzle to fill in any spots that Don't get covered. me Grand Central Station all right I'm just gonna leave that to to run down for a little bit um, it's dripping off nicely if these bubbles will pop with my torch like a yep great just a quick run over with the torch We seem to have got the majority of that covered, so I'm just going to and drain it back the other way. How's about that? Just a little bit. Mm. So I'm just seeing a couple of places where the bubbles popped. runs down but not nothing more than you'd get on resin make sure all those corners and edges are nice and done So I'm going to let that dry, I'm going to sit it back down flat, pop it over to dry and it reckons two hours before you can recoat, which to me that means two hours before I can see whether it is a good finish or not. Two hour turnaround, I like that idea, so let's check it out in two hours. All right. So, while that one's drying, 
so I haven't even waited to see if it works. <laughs> what I'm going to do with this one is this one has not been washed. Um, this is a piece that I did a uh, while ago, so it's well cured. Um, and it's on a record. But it's not been washed, so I haven't wiped it down with um, with anything. Uh, so kind of wondering whether that's a good idea or not, but we'll see. Um, what I've done too, so I can get the angle, I've taken this plastic cut cup and cut it and then just put some blue tack um, just to hold it. And it sits quite nicely on an angle over my little doohickey tray. But talking of my doohickey tray, before that starts to set, I'm actually gonna pick it up and use that now the thing with this is that being round you've got to go right round my little cup thing isn't that stable so just bearing that in mind So I'm going to use that stuff to give it that first base coat, that little shimmery cover to help the, the stuff pour. And then you can see how runny this stuff is. This is much runnier than my paints ever are. Um, I just want to see how it reacts with the silicon still on the on the record. See if we end up with ah <laughs> it falling over. Yes, we do. <laughs> um. See if we end up with cells popping up through. Where the silicon is. Definitely seeing more gaps appearing. Then I have in then I did on the other one. Just tilting it back now so it runs back the other way. It's much runnier than the acrylic pouring top coat from Deco Art. Um which I'm finding a lot easier to work with to be honest. So I'm going to sit that down flat and see if we have any silicon spots come through. I'm not seeing any at this point, which is quite exciting. Um, but we'll see what happens when it's sat for its couple of hours drying time. And um, I'm thinking, well, how do I get it off this cup so that I can sit it flat? I'm not going to. I'm just going to put a complete cup up inside the cut cup and that should sit it straight so let's wait and see what happens with these right here they are so definitely got rid of those cracks out of this one it is looking absolutely stunning very very happy with that it um yeah, look at that shine. Woohoo! 
It looks fabulous. And this one I have done about three more coats on. And we are getting rid of those cracks. Um, probably another another two. Two more coats and we'll get rid of it completely. So I would highly recommend cleaning the silicon off before you start. Highly recommend it. So guys, I am quite pleased with this. This is um, feels delicious. It feels like resin actually. Um, and it's nowhere near as expensive, nowhere near as messy. So clean them well. And I probably, if I was doing, the, I'm going to do the next ones, I'm going to do a thin coat um, with a sponge or something like that for the first coat. And then once that's dried, then do a flood coat and see what shows up with that. So from me and my very, very flowering and um, bumblebee filled plants. <laughs> Um, these are hebes. They are native to New Zealand. And where's that little bubble bee? Where'd you go? I'm trying to capture them. Aren't they pretty? They're so pretty. Oh, there you are. Hello. He's pretty too. Nature, baby. So, that's another point. This month's challenge in um, the acrylic pouring for fun is nature inspired. So, maybe you do a bumblebee. Maybe you do flowers, maybe you do a wave or an uh, underwater scene. Uh, but give yourself the permission to create something magical. And maybe even use a style you've not used before. What else is possible? I adore you all and I'll see you really soon in another video. Bye bye!